Hello again, SG Beers. I'm Companion Wolf. Welcome to another Smile Game Builder tips and tricks tutorial. This tutorial is basically a roundup of some of the requests and how to's I've received. Some are revisits of tutorials I've already done, but with uh, alternative or updated methods. And especially where more people are becoming familiar with SGB, I'll showcase other methods, including videos they've done, and credit them accordingly in future tutorials. I've taken all of these from various sources, including comments on my videos, Steam, and my Facebook page, or in Messenger. The first thing we'll cover is stopping events. What I mean by this is as an example, in RPG Maker, you have the Erase Event command, which temporarily erases an event from the map to stop it running. It's temporary because each time you visit the map, the event will load again and again when that map is revisited. So to stop the event from running this way, you can use switches to turn it off completely. In SGB, a local switch can be used instead, since each event has its own independent local switch. So as an example, we can have one a trigger one time only, and then display a message. And as it is, each time you would revisit the map, a text would appear saying hello. So by default, local switches, and indeed all switches, are turned off. So if you wanted it literally to trigger once and then not repeat, you would simply add a local event switch, which is turned on, and then add another sheet, blank sheet, with the condition local switch turned on. It won't rerun on subsequent visits to map to the maps, at least not until it's turned off again somewhere in the event. Next I'd like to revisit doors. I first covered this in tutorial 14, player direction, in which if the player faced in the direction of the door on either side, he or she would automatically walk through based on the direction they were facing. However, one of the issues raised with this method, which I now refer to as the brute force method, was that it seemed unnatural. You can't control the character walking through the doors. The door opens and the character is brute forced through the doors in the events. So there are some alternative methods for going through the doors more naturally. The method I'm going to show you is what I refer to as the Lupinos method because it's by Lupinos on Steam. I'm not taking credit for this Lupinos is, I'm just showcasing it as an alternative method and it is a really good one. You only need a single door event with two sheets and that's it. Sheet one is for the closed door. The event graphic is keep closed and collide with player is checked. Trigger, make contact with player, play the sound effect, um, change the event graphic to close, not keep closed, turn the local switch on. Then on sheet 2, which is for the opened door, the, lo the condition is set to local switch on. The graphic is keep open, collide with player is unchecked. Again, the trigger is makes contact with player, add your door effect. The change event graphic is set to close. And finally, you turn the local switch back off so it can recycle each time you go through the door. He recommends putting a wait time before the door closes, but I'm not sure if that's a good idea since wait time actually halts events until the specified time has passed. Instead, a better option might be to place some kind of synchronized timer here. I'll cover timers and try and revisit this one in a future tutorial. And here's the Lupinos method in action with Jackson Mera's sci-fi resource pack. Links to his sites will be in the description below. A 
as you can see, it works quite well. If you set the trigger to when the hero talks, you have the added option of opening and closing the doors manually. It's a pretty cool method, huh? And actually, this is now my preferred method to use as well. Kudos to Lupinos. Another request is for randomly appearing events. The basic idea is that when that after a random number is generated, a certain event or encounter appears. Just as a basic demo, we first create a separate event set up to, to generate the random numbers. It's um, an advanced variable set up to generate a random number between 1 and 6. Alternatively, you can still use the normal variable box and add the random number to it which will generate a random number between 0 and whatever number you place in there. And the trigger is once only um, so that each time you visit the map there will be a random encounter or a random event. You can play around with the rest of the, rest of the auto triggers to see which one works for you. Um, so next we'll start setting up the random encounters. For the first one, I've used the motorcycle from the G-Style resource pack. Again, the link to that will be in the description. I've set the condition to variable box with the variable random equals to 3. So that when 3 is generated, this event will appear and speed off to the left across the map before disappearing. In its event details, a trigger is one time only. You change the movement speed to fast, as an example. And we'll make it go left 13 spaces. You can check or uncheck any of these as you deem fit. Then finally, make this event transparent which is under the player movement make event invisible visible um, <clears throat> for another random event I've used an image of a flock of birds flying which I got from Pixabay the condition is random is equals to 5 and you display the image which is I've positioned slightly off screen I zoomed down to 75 percent because I didn't resize the image or anything and uh, the size on screen when I play tested it the first time was absolutely humongous anyway um, move the graphic to the other side again slightly off screen with its duration set to 1.3 seconds or whatever then delete the image and make it transparent again let's do the play test I've set the camera to overhead so you can see the entire map better if the random number isn't equals to 3 or 5 those numbers that we chose for this demo. The beauty of the debug window, accessible by pressing F5 of course, is that you can change the random number to whichever value you want, in this case 3, and then you click apply. So, there you have it, the motorcycle moves across and disappears and likewise if we change this to 5 the flock of birds flies across the screen the randomness repeats every each and every time you revisit the map but this method won't 
auto repeat at regular intervals. It's set up so that each time you revisit the map, a random event occurs based on the events you set up the uh, corresponding to the random numbers. I'll cover timed random futures in a future tutorial when I do the rest of the timers which will improve upon and expand this method and can also be used in other things such as the crafting system. The final tip is walking on water or ice. You probably already know how to do this but I thought I'd include it anyway. So normally when you put ice or water as the terrain you can't walk on it as evidenced here you simply won't be able to so that you can walk on it that setting is in the add assets maps and then natural and then we chose ice one simply check traversable and you'll be able to walk on it like so um, this will apply to all maps where this terrain is used so if you want some water or ice you can walk on and some you can't export a copy of the terrain and rename it then import it back into SGB and check traversable on one and the other keep it unchecked and that's it for another tips and tricks tutorial I'm not sure what next week's will be yet but if you'd like me to revisit methods from previous tutorials or have more suggestions and how to's for me to cover let me know in the comments below I'll write them down and continue working through them for future tutorials and sometime next week I'll be putting frequently asked questions section on the SGB subsite along with some of the answers to them. If you found this tutorial useful, give it a like. You can also subscribe to this channel for more videos. Visit me on Twitter or Facebook or the official sub SGB subsite I've created. That's it for now. As always, thanks for watching.